unsold products. A product unknown to potential buyers or known product that the buyer does not actively seek. New products also fall into this category until advertising and distribution increases and causes consumers to become aware of them. Now, do you recognize the picture on the right? It's the first generation of Apple iPod. Now, if you don't recognize this, you're probably quite young. But if you do recognize this, hey, this product went on to seriously change the way that we consume media today. This particular product was quite unknown when it was launched. In fact, the first time I saw this product was when Will Smith was raving about it. And from that moment, I was like, what is this product? And why are celebrities going crazy about it? And as the distribution increased and advertising increased, everyone ended up getting one. It's important to note though, a lot of products, even though they may be the first generation, they go on to launch an entire line. A product line is a group of closely related product items. So a product item, a specific version of a product that can be designated as a distinct offering amongst an organization's product. So for example, Apple has come a long way since the iPod. Have a look at, say, the iPhone. Now, iPhone, you would say, is part of a product item, as in a specific version of a product that can be designated as its own distinct offering. However, there's now an entire product line of them. There are different iPhones with different specifications, with different configurations, and even different sizes. In terms of the product mix, so all the products an organization sells is part of the product mix. When we're talking about product mix width, we're talking about the number of product lines an organization offers. And if we're talking about the product line depth, we're talking about the number of products an item in a product line has. So for example, if we're looking at the Apple Corporation, they would have their laptops, they would have their phones, smartwatches, uh, the traditional desktops, and so on. So these are all part of the product mix width. In each of these product lines, you're also gonna have depth in terms of all the different versions of these particular products or product groups. Product modification. Changing one or more of product's characteristics, for example, quality modification, changing a product's dependability or durability. In terms of quality modification, I would consider how mobile phones today are a lot more durable and dependable than they were back in the old days.
functional modification, changing a product's versatility, effectiveness, convenience, or safety. From a functional modification perspective, have a look at the picture on the left with the Heinz tomato ketchup. The old bottles used to come in glass with the classic look to it. And seriously, it was so annoying trying to get the ketchup out. However, they decided to do functional modifications to their packaging or to the product side of things to make it a lot more convenient, a lot more effective. Style modification, changing a product's aesthetics. For example, style change in clothing. Clothes change in style and fashion all the time. Even cars. The next time you're on the road, driving around or maybe catching public transport, have a look at the cars that you see around you. Not too long ago, cars that were more boxy was considered pretty cool. And then somewhere in between, it all started to get more bubbly and roundish. Today what we have is a combination of both, but also some really hard edges. Have a look at, say, the Toyota CHR. Now, here's an interesting concept, product obsolescence. This is the practice of modifying products so they become obsolete before they actually need replacement. Marketers contend that consumers, not manufacturers and marketers, decide when styles are obsolete, which basically means that consumers, no matter how good of a product we give to them, will eventually get bored or tired of the product that they have and they're going to want change, something different. As a result of which, products start to become obsolete over time. Think about that brand new phone that you bought. Maybe you bought it a couple of years ago. When you first bought it, oh my god, it was amazing. It took great photos, the battery lasted the entire day. However, after the one billionth update that the phone just has to do, have you noticed how slow it's become? I mean, it's not just the battery, but the phone itself seems to have become really clunky and slow. Product repositioning is changing the consumer's perception of a brand. For example, Mapisan interviewed or conducted research amongst their customer group and discovered that their customers used a spoonful of their product every time they did the laundry. And initially their customers were predominantly made up of parents with children as well as the elderly. But when they were doing their focus groups, they noticed they have a lot of people that doesn't fit their usual target market. And what they discovered was, as people were using a spoonful of their product every time they did the laundry, it made their whites whiter and their colors brighter. And this understanding through market research allowed them to reposition their product, not only as a speciality product, for people with kids or people who are older, but for everybody. And all of a sudden, you had mass market appeal for their products.
product line extension, adding additional products to an existing product line in order to compete more broadly in the industry. Coca-Cola Company is an absolute beast when it comes to this. Not only do they have multiple brands under their wings, but Coca-Cola itself has been leveraged in so many different directions, from Coke Zero to Coke Light to the original Coke, and they even tried new Coke for a little while, which epically failed. But that's okay. Product line extension. The last one is product line contraction. The elimination of unpopular sizes, flavors, and variations to concentrate on successful product lines. As a business, as any business, not everything they touch will turn to gold. Quite often they will try and experiment and some experiments don't work so well. In which case you contract the line or basically eliminate anything which is unpopular. Conversely, you can have product line extensions. So for example, in 2013, Red Bull extended its line of energy drinks with three new flavors, cranberry, lime, and blueberry. <laughs> 